We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels and all the heavenly powers, cry aloud, the cherubim and seraphim sing in endless pray, praise, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. time of worship, we will spend our time in scripture, song, and prayer, expressing our longing for peace, longing for shalom. We worship a holy God who deserves our praise, yet we know that things are not right in the world. We grieve the brokenness. Listen to these words of confession from Psalm 79. How long, Lord? Will you be angry forever? How long? Will your jealousy burn like fire? Pour out your wrath on the nations that do not acknowledge you on the kingdoms that do not call on your name. For they have devoured Jacob and devastated his homeland. Do not hold against us the sins of past generations. May your mercy come quickly to meet us. For we are in desperate need. Help us, God our Savior. For the glory of your name, deliver us and forgive 
our sins for your name's sake. Let us pray a prayer of confession together. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned We have not loved you with our whole heart, mind, and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to mend what we are and direct what we shall be, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. This saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into this world to save sinners. He bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, we are healed.
the church is a gathering of forgiven sinners called to be holy, saved by the patient grace of God. We deal patiently with others and together confess our need for grace and forgiveness. Restored in Christ's presence, shaped by his life, this new community lives out the ongoing story of God's reconciling love, announces the new creation, and works for a world of justice and peace. that the church, which shares one spirit, one faith, one hope, and spans all time, place, race, and language, has become a broken communion in a broken world. When we struggle for the truth of the gospel and for the righteousness God commands, demands, we pray for wisdom and courage. With this next song, we join our brothers and sisters from Egypt and around the world as we pray for peace. The word of the chorus is pronounced Salam.
now is our time to pray. Asking God to heal, to restore those things in this world and in the church. And we'll sing the Kyria, Lord, have mercy. There will be a topic introduced, and then we will pray again. We're asking that you would pray in whatever way you would like. You might want to sit or to huddle in groups. Maybe you want to kneel. And we're asking at this time if you might gather yourself as we begin our time of prayer. Many decisions will be made here at Senate. What is the Holy Spirit prompting us to pray for? Gracious God, we pray for all who suffer from prejudice, greed, or violence. We pray especially for all prisoners of politics or religion and for all refugees. Hear our prayers for all who are oppressed. Let us pray. We pray for all in need because of famine, flood, or earthquake. We pray for all who experience the pain of sickness, loneliness, fear, or loss. Hear our prayers, especially for those in need.
Gracious God, we pray for your church in North America and around the world. We pray for the Christian Reformed Church and all her needs. We pray for the church universal. Hear the prayers for the church. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I would like to ask you if you could stand with me. As we marvel that the Lord gathers the broken pieces to do his work, and that he blesses us still with joy, new members and surprising evidence of unity, we commit ourselves to seeking and expressing the oneness of all who follow Jesus. Joining the mission of God, the church is sent the gospel of the kingdom to call everyone to know and follow Christ and to proclaim all the assurance that in the name of Jesus there is forgiveness of sins and new life for all who repent and believe. The Spirit calls all members to embrace God's mission in their neighborhoods and in the world. 
Hallelujah. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and earth are given to me. With gratitude and expectation, we hear Jesus command, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. With joy and trust, we hear Jesus' promise, surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Lord, is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. He has made us a kingdom of priests to serve our God, and we will reign on earth. God will be all in all. Righteousness and peace will flourish. Everything will be made new, and every eye will see at last that our world belongs to God. Please sign in if you have not already done so.
I know, you know, second. Uh, keep signing in. It seems uh, a slow process, but make sure you're signed in. And um, we'll, uh, let me just go over a little bit of the order of the day uh, so we know where we're headed. I can do that while we're yet signing in. Um, we're we're going to start with 2B today. Uh, we're going to go to 2B, which is our um, synodical deputy reports and other reports of those sorts. Um, and then we'll move to 5B. Joe, so you're up for that in 5B, liturgical forms. Um, and at some point this morning, probably before we get through those two, um, we will be receiving um, the candidates. Uh, and in fact, I don't mean probably, I mean certainly. Uh, we will be receiving the candidates, and we're going to do that at 9.30 uh, this morning. Uh, we have an opportunity to welcome them all. Uh, we'll sing some songs. We'll receive them, and then we'll go right into our break uh, after the candidacy uh, uh, reception. So uh, whatever we're doing, we'll, we'll stop at 930, um, which is just over a little more than a half hour away to receive them. So we start with 2B and then 5C, uh, and then we will probably go to um, Committee 8 to the Belhar issue after we're done with 5. Um, we have some work from Committee 2 coming up that we'll go to after that. So. Just gives you a brief highlight of where we're headed this morning. How are we doing with roll call? Right, the following persons I'm not yet signed in. Stephen DeRyder, Sam Lee, Buwan Kwak, Richard Mulder, Sang Park, and Irma Rodriguez. You're here. You were here yesterday too, weren't you? We got you. If you're, if you're here and you're, um, uh, it's not working to sign in, would you raise your hand so we can just know? He's here. All and right. Is uh, Buwan Kwak, is he here? I hope I got that right. Yes, he is. Okay. Back by the seminary. And Irma Rodriguez. Yes. All, All right. right. And that completes the list. All right. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Just a few words before we go to 2B. You'll see I'm wearing a tie today. Um, I figured. I figured. I'm doing that because what we're doing here is important. Uh, and my mom said, when you don't know what you're doing, try to look like you know what you're doing. So I thought maybe I'd put on a tie. But I want you to know something else. Uh, what we're doing, although it's serious, and it's official and it's important. Um, and Lord willing, we'll be making some significant decisions today. Um, you know, I don't want us to become too full of ourselves either. Um, and I'm not naturally a tie guy except on Sunday morning and it's not Sundays. Um, so I'm gonna take the tie off, uh, but I'm gonna leave it draped over the podium so you can get the balance here, all right? <laughs> We're doing serious business, it's official. Uh, but we're also here to uh, enjoy God's presence in our midst, to celebrate uh, our multiplicity, to rejoice in the fact that God has given us different gifts, and no matter how we dress, uh, no matter how we think about some issues, we are the body of Christ uh, together. So let's, let's serve the church well today uh, in whatever we do as we move forward. And um, if at any point in our proceedings, uh, you see me grab this tie and putting it back on, that's bad news. All right, so just note, my anxiety's gone way up. I think I need a tie again. All right, 
So let's proceed with the business of the Lord and the business of the church, Advisory Committee 2B. All right, you have the, uh, the committee report on 2B um, that has been submitted. Perhaps if you have looked at this report, you have wondered where uh, this was in the, uh, the Russian novel that was handed to us weeks ago. Uh, this wasn't in there. These are given to us by synodical services to our committee when we gather here. Uh, and so in many ways, this probably will be the first time you see this uh, in this report. Um, but uh, these, this report is the, as we will see, the retirements and the actions of synodical deputies. And so the first item here, uh, min under ministerial retirements, A, information. Synod has received notice of the following ministerial retirements. Um, I am not going to read the names. Uh, we did read the names together in our committee. Speaking of the retirements, we, we spoke together. Many of us have relations with many of the names on this list. They served in our classes. They were former pastors of ours. We had them as uh, seminary professors. We shared uh, stories of what, uh, what their future perhaps is in ministry or where they're going to be located. And it was a joyous time. And so knowing that on the floor, and we're not going to go into all those details, but just know that we do as a committee greatly appreciate uh, what the message is that is conveyed uh, in receiving this information, both for, as you see, the ministers and on the following page, B, Synod has received notice of the following commissioned pastor retirements as well. And so uh, I would like to move then to see the recommendation. First, that Synod take note of the above list of ministerial and commissioned pastor retirements. So moved. We'll take note of that. And I wonder if any of them are present with us. Do we have any of those who are present with us today? If so, we'd like to recognize you. Well, they're retired, so why would they be with us? I, I guess that makes perfect sense. But as we take note of that, do take time to look over the list. Uh, I'm glad the committee had some time to do that. And if you see someone on that list that touched your life in a significant way, uh, maybe reaching out by a phone call or an email or something would be uh, most appropriate. So we take note of that. Thank you. All right, then let's go to number two. That Synod instruct the executive director to send a letter of appreciation to each of the retirees and their families listed above. Motion is before us. I see no speakers. We ready to vote. All in favor, say aye. aye. Any opposed? All right, motion carries. And then finally, that Synod offer a prayer of gratitude for these servants of God and for the many years of service they represent, and I'm willing to do that if, uh, if I can. Should we come to God in prayer? Heavenly Father, we see a list of names in front of us, but we know that these are not just names. Uh, these are servants. We give you thanks for so many things in our church. We give you thanks for harvests, the harvest that you provide your church, the harvest of lives that have been committed to you, lives that you claim through the blood of your son. And so we give you thanksgiving for harvest, but we also in this time give thanksgiving for harvest workers. We thank you on this list that includes pastors, missionaries, church planters, seminary teachers, chaplains, and we think of them in their roles, but we also think of what they've accomplished, what they have done in your name. The sermons that were preached, the, the catechism lessons that were taught, the words of encouragement that were given, the, the sacraments that were celebrated, the words of hope offered at a bedside, the, the words of encouragement offered at the grave. We, we thank you so much for these Servants, we pray, Lord, for them in retirement. We know that this is an official act of retirement from a, an official position. But yet we know that in the kingdom, there, that retirement isn't really what we do, that we always are a part of the kingdom. And so whatever uh, these servants are doing in their future, continuing to mentor, to guide, to bless, and edify this body, we pray that they may do so knowing that you bless and go before them. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, then we move on to our second point, and this is the main point of the committee's uh, report here. We have the work of synodical deputies. Uh, once again, just kind of a parameters of this for those um, who are perhaps not as familiar with church order. Our classes make decisions based on church order 
and, okay, and there are times when our church order specifies that synodical deputies must be present and, and uh, must agree uh, with the actions and concur with the actions of a, uh, of a classis. And so we will be moving through here. You will see a whole list of names for the variety of articles. Once again, we will probably move fairly fast through those names, not meaning that it, this work is not important. Our committee did go, once again, through every single name. Once again, on all of these things, we shared some joyous stories in relation to what uh, these articles represent, uh, new ministries, uh, new ordinations, uh, joys. And we also shared sometimes some of the laments that come out of these situations of, of loss and of things that we grieve over. And so as we go through these, please note that our committee did prayerfully go through these and, and bring this before you knowing that, uh, that the, these issues are well received. So what's that? Uh, we move then on, you see here on A, ministers from other denominations, which falls under church order article eight. You see a list of names and paragraphs. There are 14 of them before you. Uh, and our recommendation comes at the end of A on page 4 uh, that Senate approve the work of the Synodical Deputies for this church article 8. The motion is before us. Any questions? I see no names. We ready to vote? I see a name, don't I? No, no name. We're still ready to vote. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Now we moved on to the next point, the classical examination of candidates as per church order article 10. Uh, this is kind of the, the garden variety uh, church order article that is used for those who uh, have completed their theological training, have been declared candidates for the ministry in our denomination, and then uh, seek ordination uh, via our classes. Uh, you have a list in front of you. Also, uh, one note, the deputy's comments that were given here uh, were for our information. Um, Synod does not take action on those comments, and from what I understand, those will not appear necessarily in the acts of Synod that are published, but they are there to help us uh, to, to kind of determine what took place. And so you see under uh, letter B, a, a whole variety, all the way paging uh, 42 uh, candidates that successfully sustained uh, their examinations. And so at the end of 42 names there, we make the recommendation that Synod approve the work of the synodical deputies. All right, so moved, and that is before us with the 42 <coughs> paragraphs. The recommendation is on the bottom of page nine. Are we ready to vote? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. All right, the next one is ministers in specialized services. This falls under uh, church order article 12 uh, C. And just let me briefly reference that one just to make sure we're all on the same page here. Uh, this is the church article that states, a minister of the word may also serve the church in other work which relates directly to the calling of a minister, but only after the calling church is demonstrated to the satisfaction of classes with the concurring advice of synodical deputies that said work is consistent with the calling of a minister of um, the word. So you have the, um, let me make sure I got the number right, you have 11 of these that are here. We do want to make a verbal note on uh, number nine. Uh, we had a question about that concerning uh, Reverend Mary Vandenberg, and from our understanding that was given to us uh, from, from uh, 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 Kathy Smith is that that really was kind of superfluous action there. Uh, Mary had already been ratified, exa had been examined and been ratified by synod to the position of seminary uh, uh, professor, and so it wasn't necessarily needed. Um, we as a committee don't necessarily feel that it's a mistake that has to be remedied. I had uh, Professor Vandenberg in a Doctrine of God class uh, a few years ago, so I won't say it's a mistake, but let us say it is God's providence that we are doubly affirming that she is to be a seminary professor for us. Well, well isn't that fun? Mary, would you please stand, and we'll affirm you all over again.
And, it, and it's good to be told on the floor of Senate that you're not a mistake, isn't it? That's, that's good. So with that, uh, with these 11 uh, for church order, Article 12C, uh, we, um, that's, we move that Synod approve the work of the synodical deputies. So moved and in front of us, no speakers. Are we ready to vote? All in favor, say aye. aye. Any opposed? All right, that motion carries. All right, now we're on to D, which is loaning a minister to another denomination according to Church Order, order Article 13C. Once again, this is needed. Uh, the synodical deputies need to approve uh, these loaning of ministers to other denominations. Uh, you see some of the deputies' comments, uh, but they're not particular to what we have to do here. But let us once again, if you see the 10 names, uh, we will conclude then with the recommendation that Senate approve the work of the synodical deputies. So moved. All right, that motion is before us as well. I see no names on the list. Are we ready to vote? All in favor, say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, now we're on to E, release from office to enter a ministry outside the Christian Reformed Church under Article 14B. This as it states, this is to be approved if, if, uh, if our pastors desire to move into a ministry outside of the Christian Reformed Church. This is Church Order Article 14B. You see the names listed? There are 13. Um, we do, as a committee, have to pull out one name for the time being, number 11. And the reason why is because it, that is the subject of the appeal, that this body will take up at some point number 11, which is, um, which is asking for approval of, of Ferry Yang's Article 14. Uh, as a committee, uh, we are asking that to be removed right now until Synod decides upon the appeal. And so I would move that we have numbers 1 through 10, 12 and 13, that Synod approve the work of the synodical deputies for those uh, numbers. Okay, that motion is in front of us, and is that clear? We're not acting on number 11, but we're acting on all the rest of them at this time. I see no one on the list. We're ready to vote. All in favor, say aye. Aye. And motion carries. We then move to F. Release from office to enter a non-ministerial vocation under church Article uh, 14C. You, you do notice, and I should have maybe mentioned that even with the previous one, there is from name to name, there are distinctions that we give under Article 14B and C of whether a pastor is honorably released, released, um, dismissed, or considered uh, under the status of deposition or deposed, and so note that changes for each one of, of these depending on what the classes and the synodical deputies ruled. So those are, just make a note on that. Getting back to, the, um, to this list, F, uh, release from an office to enter non-ministerial non vocation under church article 14C. You see the four names listed there, and uh, we would move that synod approve the work of the synodical deputies. That motion is in front of us. I see no names. Are we ready to vote? All in favor, say aye. aye. Any opposed? All right, that motion carries. All right, then we move to G. Return of office of one who is released to enter a non-ministerial vocation under church order article 14E. Uh, and you see that there, the one name. Um, and we move that synod approve the work of the synodical deputies. The motion is before us. I see no names. Are we ready to vote? All in favor, say aye. aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. Next, H, release from ministry in a congregation under church order, Article 17A. And you see uh, the names once again uh, listed. We have 15. Uh, names that have come before us, and once again, for a variety of different reasons, and our committee listened to some of them, some that we, um, we speak in joy of, of servants who are uh, taking up responsibilities of study or other matters, and sometimes we know uh, that's, that these articles represent 
uh, lamentable situations in which there is needed separation between a pastor and a church. With that said, we have the 15 names before us, and we move um, that synod approve the work of the synodical deputies. The motion is made and is in front of us. I see no names. Ready to vote? All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next, under letter I, extension of eligibility for call under church order article 17. Ordinarily we have, or it, it is a, uh, a two year uh, process for article 17s and then to continue to extend that, that needs to be petitioned to the classes and then approved by synodical deputies. You see the list of 10 names uh, in front of you asking for an extension under church article 17C. We move that Senate approve the work of the synodical deputies. Motion is before us. I see no names. Are we ready to vote? All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? All right, that motion carries. The next we have article uh, 17C, the release of the officer of minister of the word. Under this article, this is when the time period has, has occurred and um, for whatever reason, extensions are not sought and the classes will then release uh, an officer or an office, a minister uh, under this article 17C. You see the two names in front of you. Uh, we move that Senate approve the work of the synodical deputies. The motion is before us. I have no names to speak. Are we ready to vote? All in favor, say aye. aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. Next, letter K, declaration that a commissioned pastor position fits synodical guidelines under church order article 23A. For commissioned pastors, uh, this is under this article, the position has to be uh, has to be concurred with by synodical deputies. And so in some ways, the bold is the names of those who are filling the position, but in many ways, the bold should be the position that was approved by classes and the synodical deputies. But it's not fun to praise positions. Let's give thanks for the people who are serving in these positions. And so you see uh, the list of, of names before you, quite an extensive list, uh, 34. Um, including one at the very end that does not have a name, but does have a position of commission pastor for particular uh, ministry. And so at the end of uh, 34 positions, uh, we ask once again that Synod approve the work of the synodical deputies. The motion is in front of us. I see no names to speak. Are we ready to vote? All in favor say aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. And so the follow up on that then is if there have been previous positions that have been approved um, and now we uh, have a list of names of those who have been examined by their classes. This is not needing the work of a synodical deputy to examine them and so simply our recommendation is that Senate take note of the above named persons ordained as commission pastors within the classes indicated. Senate so notes. Then we move on to M service of commission pastor in an organized church as solo pastor under church order articles 23-B or C. And so you see the one, um, the one here that's been approved to as a commission pastor serve a congregation as its solo uh, pastor under uh, B or C. And so we move that Senate approve the work of the synodical deputies. The motion is before us. Are we ready to vote? All in favor, say aye. aye. Any opposed? All right, that motion carries. All right, letter N, calling a commission pastor to serve as, in an organized church as solo pastor under church order article 23. There are stipulations involved here. If a church would like to call uh, a, uh, a commission pastor into a solo pastor position. Those are more spelled out in the supplements as well. Uh, but these are the, um, the four names before you. Um, one, and so we are making a recommendation under, uh, under N, but we do have a note as well as a committee. Uh, 
that, and you see our note kind of in our recommendation, we note that the contextualized learning plans required for commissioned pastors serving as solo pastors as called for in supplement tw article 23A have not been submitted in every case. That is something we, uh, that the, the church order supplement asks, that if commissioned pastors are to be placed into solo pastor positions, that there is a contextualized learning plan in place, and that the synodical deputies are supposed to verify that, and there is a portion on, I believe on the sheet, that the synodical deputies fill out that speak to that, and on several of these, it didn't take place. We don't have a mechanism to, to kind of hammer that, but we note that it needs to be done. It is called for uh, in here. And so we note that, but we, uh, we ask in this area that Synod do approve the work of the synodical deputies. All right, the motion to approve along with the note is before us. Chris. We on yet? There we All go. Right. Chris Schoon, Classes Hamilton. I know we're not dealing with the deputy's comments, but something caught my eye under number two with this. Uh, it says, since Glenn has an MDiv degree, David could see the possibility of moving to full ordination. And that troubles me that we're saying commission pastors are not fully ordained. Uh, and I just want that noted. Thanks, Chris. You're correct. Any other notes or questions? Otherwise, are we ready to vote? All in favor, say aye. aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. All right. Um, now we're under letter O, commission pastors concluding service under church order article 23. The following commission pastors have concluded service in the classes indicated in the positions to which they were appointed. Um, and then we, we don't make an action on this. It is the recommendation that Synod take note of the above named persons who have concluded service as commission pastors in the classes indicated. So noted. And then we have the final part of this, um, of this report. P, deposition of a minister of the word according to church order, order articles 82 and 83. And you see the one name here and this recommendation that Synod approve the work of the synodical deputies. Motion is on the floor. Any discussion? I see no one in the queue. Are we ready to vote? All in favor, say aye. aye. Any opposed? All right, that motion carries. Um, just as a, a verbal note, we did not put this anywhere in this, um, but just once again, thank you and appreciation to our synodical deputies for the work that they do and, and the diligence that they offer to our classes uh, on these matters for their advice, for their wisdom. It is very much appreciated. And then perhaps, secondly, a note to the class, <clears throat> to our classes. You saw some of the notes from the deputies and comments. Please, as, as classes, take those seriously. Uh, that is the responsibility, not of a synod, to make sure that those comments are followed through on, but that is the work of a classist. And so we just would like to encourage um, that our classes take those notes and comments very seriously. And so I conclude, uh, and I also would like it noted that this is the fastest 28 pages of synod. So can that be? Thank you. Thank you. Would you, would you stay there just a moment? I'd like... Um, I suspect we have a lot of synodical deputies in our midst. Um, uh, so you've served the church well. Can you just stand wherever you are and let us note the work of our synodical deputies? I did that because I knew Bert wanted to stretch his legs, so gave him a reason to stand. I also want to welcome those of you who are uh, gathering here. We have uh, our candidates. And I see uh, our gallery a little fuller than normal. Uh, many of you have gathered, no doubt, for the candidates. Welcome uh, to you. Uh, in just a few moments, we're going to do that at 9.30. But I'm wondering if maybe we can move to 5B and at least give an introduction uh, from, get an introduction from our reporter and our chair who's ever going to do that uh, as to the work that is in front of us on liturgical forms. So that's committee 5B. 
We have a number of liturgical forms and some other things that we need to approve, but perhaps before 9.30, and there's limited time, you understand, but that can at least set the stage for when we come uh, back to this later. So I'll turn it over to... Uh, we have a speaker already, but we have no motion on the floor. Do you want to wait till there's a motion, I assume? Yes. <clears throat> All right. Go ahead, Joe. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Committee 5B, the recommendations. The first recommendation is this, that Senate approve the following liturgical forms and introductions printed in the addendum of the Liturgical Forms Committee report as revised in the addendum to this report. And you see a, a table of contents, so to speak, of 13 forms there with uh, grounds let me simply read those grounds, and then I would like to take a moment um, just to, to make a couple comments about um, what we're doing here. Uh, grounds A, these forms are consistent with scriptural teaching and with the Reformed confessions. B, strengthening the pool of explicitly approved synodical forms is valuable, both for congregations that use the exact text of approved forms and congregations that adapt them. C, revisions were needed in several places uh, where the language in the introductions and forms for baptism as submitted by the liturgical forms uh, committee described baptism in terms that could lead to the conclusion that baptism is a sacramental sign and seal of the eternal salvation in Christ of that particular baptized infant. Um, or in other words, kind of could be read as falling into the era of presumptive regeneration. I want to be quick to point out, this is not an accusation against anyone or against the committee, but that the wording could be read and could be heard by our members in that way. So several revisions also aim to emphasize the need to embrace the gracious promises of God by faith. Other revisions incorporate references to the covenant, which were notably rare. Still other revisions sought to clarify ambiguous language and improve sentence structure, and very few of them were of that sort. You notice that you have um, a, a document of 27 pages, and that, that looks rather extensive, but um, looks can be deceiving. Uh, if you took all of the revisions, the lines that are highlighted, uh, in there and on the, that will be on the screen. Put them all on one page. You don't even have one page. But as any good pastor knows, it's important to take things in their context. And so you have the context. There might be one word or one line that changes on a five-page form, um, but you get the whole form. So there's, it's not really as, as huge a revision. And, and also, um, many of the revisions, or several of the revisions, are identical. We have forms for infant baptism in younger children, forms for older children and adults with exactly the same languages. So the revisions are exactly the same in those cases too. Um, our our um, advisory committee took seriously the warnings that are given against wordsmithing uh, or making changes to forms that task forces have worked hard and long on. We took that very seriously. We believe that the changes we're recommending are not uh, so much word smithing, but are changes that are helpful to clarify uh, language that pastors and members, as they use these forms, um, could find to be both uh, verbally or linguistically and also theologically ambiguous and difficult. Uh, this isn't just a study committee report that's being, you know, wordsmith. These are uh, forms that will be used in worship, and words are very important in worship. Even there, we have tried to focus only on those that have some kind of theological uh, significance or might be understood or misunderstood in that sense. So we really strongly want to urge you not to start wordsmithing as we go through this. Uh, we feel that we are your appointed servants as an advisory committee. And as that being that the case, we have reviewed these thoroughly. We have taken a good amount of time on these. And, uh, and, and so we've tried to serve you in that way. We believe that the Liturgical Forms Committee 
has served us all in that way also. As I pointed out, 24 pages, 27 pages, um, we're just talking about uh, less than a page of changes. So please take note of that. We appreciate the work of the Liturgical Forums Committee, but we do believe that these um, changes we're suggesting will be helpful. We believe that they and our committee are here to serve you, uh, not the other way around. So one final note, the differences um, that you find between the original language and the revised language couldn't be understood in part in terms of differences of who you see as your target audience uh, in our culture, as our culture changes. Uh, you know how that goes, sometimes you have a pendulum of, of possibilities. On the one hand, there are those in our culture who fail to appreciate baptism and, and the Lord's Supper as sacraments. And, and, and so they take the attitude, nothing really happens there. It just is like a sign. It just points to, to something else. Nothing is accomplished in the sacraments. And we certainly don't want to give that impression. Um, and, and the forms try very strongly not to give that impression. This stress the activity of Christ, of God, the Spirit, uh, in our sacraments. And, but we, from an advisory committee, believe that sometimes the wording went a bit too far and that our, our congregations will read into it more than is intended and should be. It, but on the other hand, there are those in our congregation that we have experienced, and this is an increasing trend too, that we have many baptized members of our churches who are not following up on their baptisms with expressions of their faith, with professions of faith and, and active Christian lives. And, and yet, we, we find that when uh, tragedy happens or in other circumstances, th there's, there's this presumption that because they were baptized, uh, it's okay, they're saved, or that they don't have to follow up in terms of faithful church participation and partic participation in the work of the Lord because, well, they're Christians, and we want to guard against, against that too. So those are sort of the parameters back and forth. Um, and simply that as note, but as far as procedural note, um, we have 13 of them here. I'm going to suggest that we not deal with them all at once, but in, in segments that are kind of four categories. Okay, thank you, Joe. And I'm going to interrupt you now. Uh, you've set the stage for us well. The delegates sort of know where we're headed on these uh, liturgical forms. I also just want to note that when we come back to this, uh, we have others who have the privilege of the floor, those uh, from the um, liturgical forms committee as, long as, our, as well as our executive director, who always has the privilege, and uh, uh, the chair of the Board of Trustees as well, all can speak to this issue. Uh, thank you, but we're going to uh, receive our candidates now, and I'd like to call um, our Director of Candidacy, uh, Reverend David Cole, forward. David Cole, where are you? Uh, there you are, by all the candidates. I'm going to turn it over to him. He's going to lead us uh, through this process, uh, and this should be a very enjoyable time. We're delighted to be able to receive candidates this morning. Thank you, Mr. President. Before us, we have standing 20 of the 47 candidates. They represent uh, all 47 of them, and we are so glad to be able to celebrate with them this morning as a uh, synod, and we welcome so many of their guests and family who are also president. Uh, we'll be, as I present them after, uh, the, after the welcome of the candidates officially, then the president of synod, the president of the seminary, will have opportunity to, to address the uh, synod, and then we're going to move into a time of, uh, of worship. And as we celebrate, we also receive these persons as gifts of God, 
and dedicate them to, uh, with our encouragement and our prayer and our promise for uh, careers of service to come. 47 names to read, and each has their own story. But as I read their names, the ones who are present are going to just kind of take a, a short step forward so you can uh, see they're uh, in alphabetical order so you'll be able to see the progress as we go through. Mr. President and Senate of 2016, these are your candidates for this year. Christopher R. Allen, Johannes Budi, Andrew W. Carlson, Zigang Chen, Scott Chiang, Elizabeth A. DeVries, Daniel J. DeVries, Willem DeVries, Daryl Delaney, Trent Elders, Kendall A. Everett, Tara K. Foreman, Laura A. Geichelar de Ryder, Lloyd H. Hemstreet, Brendan Brenda Cronenmeyer Hyank, Drew D. Hooksum, Hookema, Brian Hoffman, Grant Hoffman, Sarah J. Hogendorn, Kyung Wan Jung, Matthew J. Kamink, Moses Kang, Nathan W. Klingenberg, Timothy Koyman, Jonathan Kuhl, Sang Myung Samuel Lee, Cheryl J. Leesman, Benjamin D. McKnight, He Jung Na, Katrina J. Olson, Jennifer L. Pokowski, Jesse M. Powles, Matthew A. Pierce, Kristen J. Pickard, Joella Renivason, Peter G. Rockhold, Hendrik Roda, Evan K. Santoso, Kelly K. Sexton, Sharon R. Smith, Samuel D. Sutter, Brian P. Tarpe, Ricardo R. Tavares, Ariana M. Tolsma, Jacob D. Van Steenwijk, Thomas J. Van Wyk, and Bradley R. Zwiers. These are the candidates of 2016. We are so glad that you're here, brothers and sisters in Christ. And I want to note that probably someday you may put on your shelf what has been referred to as war and peace. <laughs> <laughs> because your name will be in the Acts of Synod for 2016. I don't think of it as a war and peace. I think it as a travelogue as a travel guide in terms of the Christian Reformed Church that you can survey the Christian Reformed Church by reading this material. And on page 330, there is the report of the historical committee that noted the 150th anniversary of Wellsburg Church in Iowa or Ebenezer in Berwyn, Illinois. It also lists significant milestones for pastors, ministers of the word. And on page 330, it begins to list 132 ministers who have served a combined 7,776 years in ordained ministry. A long obedience in the same direction. We may not have been there on their first day when those 132 pastors began their service, but we are here today for you and our desires to encourage you on this first day, to have the vision of ministry to God and to his church that is a long obedience in the same direction, 
Today is a day that marks your transition from the seminary to the church in a very particular way. As seminary president, I represent the faculty, the staff, and board of places of training and learning communities that have prepared you for this moment where you now face the church and particularly this body that represented and embodies the Christian form church in North America. This is a church that loves you that desires to pray for you and challenge you to a long obedience in the same direction. Let me just walk through those words. A long obedience. We live in an age of instant gratification that has even affected the church. You will need to be intentional in cultivating a pathway for yourself and others to a view that we are on a journey that may be long, but will be fruitful as we are faithful. This journey is also to be framed by obedience. Obedience to the Lord and obedience to his word is guided by his spirit. We want to note that on this day, your first steps of obedience. You received a call from God to go to seminary. You shared that prompting with others. Maybe when you shared that sense of calling, the people who you told were like Sarah in the Bible. They laughed. I still remember my wife, who does love me, say this question to me as with raised eyebrows. Are you sure you want to go to seminary? Are you really sure? Tom, I'm looking at you. I think Edna asked that question. Tom grew, was at New Life Church. Grateful for each and every one of you and your stories. You then submitted yourself to others to gain clarity and follow that prompting in obedience to gain training and enter in a process that led to you, you to this moment of being declared a candidate as minister of the word. You moved. You sold a home. You placed your children in new schools. In some way, shape, or form, you sacrificed to make it to this moment. Thank you for taking that step of obedience, and may you continue in that journey of obedience a long obedience in the same direction. Today, we pray for the beginning of your journey, but we do stand on tiptoes, anticipating the next step and praying for you, for your being consistent in your life and in your witness. We live in an age of selfies and Twitter where people follow you. And that's so often self-centered. And we're called to a life of servanthood. Servanthood entails sacrifice. We do not know what God is calling you to or even where. And as we later place hands of blessing upon you, we know that God himself desires to uphold you, protect you, provide for you, and encourage you on this day, seeking to begin a long obedience in the same direction. We love you. We will pray for you. We desire to journey with you. May God bless you and keep you now and always. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, President Maidenblick. You've acknowledged in your comments that there are other people that have been involved in this journey. And that's spouses and family members and parents. And we have a number of spouses and family members and parents that are here, and I'd like to take a moment for Synod to acknowledge them as well. If you are here accompanying one of these candidates, would you please stand for a moment? I hope you can sense that uh, the candidates appreciate you as well as the rest of us do. And we acknowledge that God works among us as a community. And we praise God for your part in this journey. I know that many delegates of Synod are related to these candidates somehow. Some even perhaps as a parent. I don't know of any parents this year that are, uh, are parents of a candidate. But it might be related in some other way. Or perhaps you've been their pastor or their elder or their deacon or their cadet leader, or their GEMS leader, or their Sunday school teacher, or such. I just like to, to test the body and see 
Which of you as delegates have had a personal relationship with one of these candidates? Would you stand a moment? Thank you, and praise God for you too. We're going to express ourselves now in very overt worship, turning to the Lord of the church, praising him, dedicating these persons and for them themselves to dedicate themselves to the Lord of the church. We're going to sing the song, O Jesus, Joy of Loving Hearts, and then we're going to have a litany and then another song and then a time of prayer. The litany is going to be led this morning by a member of the Cassidy Committee who actually happens to be a delegate to Synod this year. We're very glad to be able to have one of our candidate uh, committee members as a uh, delegate this year. And uh, Pastor Fernando Valencia is going to read that. He is a delegate from Classes Greater Los Angeles. He will be uh, reading the leader's part of the litany. The words will be up on the screen. We'll all be able to participate. We'll be seated for the litany, but let's stand together for the song. and sisters in Jesus Christ you are the ones who choose by God choose by high calling and praise of God choose to be a whole people God's instruments to do his work and to speak out for him to tell others the night and day the difference he makes for you How does the knowledge of God's creation and providence help us? We need to be patient when things go against us, thankful when things go well, and for the future we can have good confidence in our faithful God and Father, that nothing will separate us from his love. All creatures are so completely in his hand that without his will they can neither move nor be moved. Praise be to God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father of compassion, and the God of all comfort. Who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. For just as the sufferings of Christ flow over into our lives, so also through Christ our comfort overflows.
I'd like to ask the delegates and our guests to be seated for just a moment. I have the privilege as uh, President of Senate this year to pray a prayer of blessing, thanksgiving uh, over our candidates. But what I'd like to ask you candidates to do uh, is to look out at the folks who are gathered here. Um, look at your loved ones first. They've been with you for so long and supported you in so many ways and presumably will continue to be with you, we trust. But I also want you to look at those sitting in the tables, uh, at the tables in front of you. They represent uh, the churches of our denominations, or at least the classes of our denomination. And what I'd like to ask now for the blessing is for you to um, seek out uh, some of those delegates. It might be from your home classes. It might be from a classes where you served an internship. It might just be someone you see who um, you've become connected to. The idea is that you would move out onto the floor as candidates, even as you are moving out into the church as uh, candidates for ministry, and be surrounded in love by the churches who have formed you, the churches where you have served, people who have been praying for you. And I also invite our guests, you're, you can feel free to come onto the floor as well. The idea is that all of our candidates will be surrounded by the churches and the members who have been supporting them. So candidates, go find folks. <laughs> and folks, find our candidates. Let's surround them, um, and I'll give you time to do that, and then we're gonna pray a prayer of blessing for our candidates. I want, to give, I want to give time for our parents, for our guests, for our loved ones to come out of uh, uh, the seats where our guests are. Candidates, if you'll hold up your hand and wave if you think someone's trying to find you, uh, that would be great, uh, just so they know uh, where you are. As you went out onto the floor, some of your family might have lost contact with you temporarily. I see just a few more coming to where they want to be. You want to go up there? You can go up there. Go ahead. We have a future president of Senate budding here. That's right, he's ready. I think we are duly constituted here and gathered around uh, the candidates Let's just lift our hearts, our minds, our souls in prayer, a blessing for our candidates. Dear Heavenly Father, this is a blessed time. As we look at the candidates that you have blessed us with in the Christian Reformed Church of North America, as we look at those who we have loved, those we've baptized, those perhaps who we have taught, those who have taught us, as we look at families and friends who have supported us, as we look at fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, churches and classes who have lifted us up, we see the church. And in these candidates, we see potential future leaders in your church. We pray, Lord, that you will bless them uh, as they go on their way to the calling, whatever calling you may have in store for them. And as we have already mentioned, Lord, in our litany from um, our Heidelberg Catechism, we pray that they will be able to be patient when things go against them, as no doubt they will at times. May they be exceedingly thankful and never overlook it when things go well. May they know that is from your hand. 
and in whatever future you have for them, may they have good confidence in you as our faithful God and Father that nothing will ever separate them from your love. May they know that they, along with all creatures, are so completely in your hand that without your will, they will never be moved. They cannot be moved. We pray, Lord, that they will know that always and that we as a church will know it and we will rejoice in your sovereignty, in your providence, in your calling, and in your work of the church through these candidates and others. Lord, we pray all of this in Jesus' name, all together saying, Amen. Amen. We have time now to continue to informally interact with our candidates and their families. Uh, we are taking our break now. There are refreshments. You gotta go up to the second floor and it's on the east side. Right out this way there are refreshments. Feel free to mingle here, but if you want the refreshments upstairs and to the east side. Oh, you know what? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold up, hold up. I got, I got all excited about the refreshments. My apologies. Uh, we have one more song we're gonna sing. It's gonna come up on the, on the screen. We are going to remind ourselves that Christ the Lord is risen today, now and always, and we will soar where he has led. Christ the Lord is risen today. You may go on your way. Delegates, let's be back at 20 after 10. 20 after 10.